Hi there, Brad from Penguin Motors here. Um, just to introduce a video series we're going to run on installation of our Superfoam engine dyno. We'll be going through the steps of installing the dyno cell itself in the room and then fitting the dyno apparatus, the cooling system, the electronics, the whole works. As for how long this is going to take, who knows? It could be a while, but it's going to be a fun time getting there. This is Superflow 901 engine dyno. And what you do with an engine dyno is you physically take an engine, you mount it to it, and it allows you to run it and simulate it being under load and working as if it was in a vehicle. But see, it's see. not in a vehicle, it's on a dyno cell, so you can measure all aspects of what the engine's doing and very accurately measure its power output without things like parasitic losses and variables such as gearboxes and drivetrains and tyre size. That would affect the... Affect the readings. Cool. And it's a really good tool for tuning engines when you want to extract more power. Because if you want to try a different camshaft with the engine here on the dyno cell, it's easy to take a camshaft out and put another one in, whereas if the car was, if the engine was in the car, it's not so simple. You may have to take the engine out or the head off to change the can, to put it back in, to put it on the test cell and test it again. It's, it's a simple and accurate way of testing engines, if you're looking for performance. These things are hideous expensive. Currently, a new one will set you back about 65,000 pounds, plus shipping, and import taxes away from, from Jolly Old US of A. America, I remember that bit. Yes. Fantastic, cool. It's a bit of an old dyno, but How old? Me, this one, I don't know the exact age of it. It's probably mid to late 1980s. Typically, it's, <coughs> you've, got a, you've got a cart, you attach it to, there's a drive shaft there that goes onto the engine. At the rear of the dyno, you've got an absorber which the best way to describe it is like a big water wheel in reverse. The engine drives the wheel and by restricting the water flow, you make it hard to turn. How much restriction you have to apply to it gives you a torque figure. You've got a speed sensor in there. So if you know the speed and you know the torque, you actually know the power output. X and Y equals Z, fantastic. Yeah. Over here we have uh, a tower. The tower contains coolant. So essentially, the engine is, to all intents and purposes, operating exactly as if it's in a car. The dyno is fed with a water supply. It has around a thousand litre water tank. Bringing fresh water in, down big hoses to clip onto the rear of it. So it's literally a water wheel. Yeah. The same coolant which is used by the absorber to measure the power. It's also used in a heat exchanger here to maintain the engine's temperature. Because obviously in a car, you've got a radiator <laughs> and cooling fans and wind. On the dyno, you've got none of that. So you have to have a heat exchanger, which is just like the uh, hot water cylinder in your house, only in reverse. So this is the, this is the bare bones of the dyno. Yeah, it doesn't look like it does much at the minute. No, <laughs> we are surrounded by bits of it. You have the major mechanical part of it. There's lots of other little parts of it floating around, such as this, which is an airflow meter. There's lots of bits like this floating around. Lots of large green pipe. Why is it in so many bits? Because I, because I bought it from company and it was fully assembled in Burton-on-Trent. Nice. So in order to get it back here, we had to dismantle not only the dyno, and this is the physical dyno with the cart, but we also had to dismantle the dyno cell and the exhaust extraction and everything else that came with it. Which we'll have a look at in a minute. Yes. Which is everywhere. Yes. Nice. And there are very large pieces of exhaust pipe. Well, actually, that's a small bit. Because it, essentially you have to simulate the engine conditions, so you need a huge air intake and you need a huge exhaust. 
You could run this in, in a, just a room, but the noise an engine makes at full chat means you would be extremely unpopular with any neighboring businesses or even local residents. <laughs> in a room like it, it just running in a room it's not very good for your health or ideal output for the engine because the engine needs a, a fresh supply of clean air which you need to get from outside somewhere and you need to vent and extract Got exhaust because you're closely possible trying to simulate real world conditions driving up the road that being one part of the exhaust extraction system nice one of many that you've got down there it looks like yeah so you've just dragged out this bit because we're going to talk about it in a minute i just laughed because it makes me think of the old like apollo movies where they're there with the tons of desks of screens and and dials <laughs> oh, yes. that's literally what it looks like to yes. me to my untrained yes. eye <laughs> this this is the control panel for 901 dyno um here you have the throttle that's a throttle that is the throttle wow yeah, it's via a hydraulic line, it's connected to the engine dyno because the engine dyno itself will be in an insulated room. You'll be on the outside of it with this control panel, looking through a window. Got it. Watching your dyno test. There's your throttle. You've got, uh, you've got readings on things like engine temperature, airflow, pressures. The, it's old, but the technology is still there. It will actually run an automated test run. So whilst you set the machine up, you, rip, you put load on the throttle, you press the start button, and the dyno will let the engine rev up on its own and record all the data that happens. So, so these were first made in 1978. And when you look in the back of it, you can see why, because there's, there's wires everywhere. Wow. Huge great plug-in circuit ports. If you had a modern dyno, mm -hmm. this whole console is replaced by, as most of the computer this big, and a monitor. And a button or two. Yes. It's like comparing the computing power that sent man to the moon to your iPhone there. <laughs> your yeah. iPhone is infinitely more powerful. Yeah. But it did a job. And it still does do a job. It can be updated to run more modern software, whether I need to, whether I will, is another matter. Essentially what you do now is you replace, sadly, all of this <laughs> with a computer. And apparently these are still, these are still sought after and worth good money. But being of a certain age, I think it's just so cool to look at that even if I don't ever actually use it, I'll keep it as a desk. <laughs> it would make a great desk. It really Absolutely. would make a great desk. This is part of the dyno cell itself. This part's actually on its side. Exhaust in, and it goes out, up, extraction fans through the roof. It's insulated to try and keep the noise down and avoid upsetting the neighbors. This here will be the dyno room. At the moment, it's a half empty storeroom. But this. This is where the, all the action will happen. The before shot, as it were. So it fits, you've measured, right? It, it fits. Definite? Yeah, ab absolutely. The, the room is three and a half metres wide. The dyno cell's three metres. The room's 5.7 deep. And the dyno cell is 3.7. So absolutely, it will fit. But it's going to be interesting assembling a box nearly the size of the room into the room itself. <laughs> 